Welcome to VOP News Update. I'm Moses Humphrey. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has reassigned various ministerial portfolios among the nominated ministers. Now, this development was revealed in a statement signed by the special advisor to the president, media and publicity, Ajuri Ngalali, yesterday. Engineer Abubakar Momo has been redeployed from the Federal Ministry of Youth to the Federal Ministry of Niger Delta Development. His Excellency Adigbo Yiga Oyutala is redeployed as the Honorable Minister of Marine and Blue Economy. Honorable Bumi Tunji Ojo is redeployed as the Honorable Minister of Interior, among others. It was also noted that all aforementioned changes will take immediate effect by these directives of the President. The Economic Community of West African States ECOWAS has rejected Nijay Junta's three-year power transition plan. ECOWAS Commissioner for Political Affairs, Peace and Security, Abdul Fattah Musa, stated this during an interview with the BBC yesterday. The head of the military junta in Niger Republic, General Abdurrahmani Chiani, noted that he would relinquish power within three years and warned that any intervention by foreign forces would not be a walk in the park. His warning followed the arrival of an ECOWAS delegation in the country for a final diplomatic push before deciding on military intervention against the junta. In a BBC interview, Musa said that Chiani's proposal was just a smokescreen for dialogue and diplomacy. Although the Sahel state's new military leaders have officially banned protests, in practice, those in support of the coup are allowed to go ahead. The National Emergency Management Agency has commenced the distribution of relief materials to the victims of the 2022 flood in Kwara State. The distribution of the relief materials was flagged off by Governor Abdurrahman Abdurrazak, who was represented by his deputy, Mr. Kayode Alabi. Items distributed to the beneficiaries included agricultural inputs, food items, sewing machines, grinding machines, mosquito nets, and mattresses, among others. Speaking at the events, the Director General of NEMA, Mustafa Ahmed, who was represented by the agency's Head of Monitoring and Evaluation, Mr. Ephraim Tony. Well, he recalled that the 2022 flood disaster devastated many communities across the country, including Kwara State, where most of the people in the communities were displaced and their farmlands and crops were completely washed away by water. A stop and search operation by the operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, on the Lokoja Abaji Highway has led to the discovery of counterfeit $20 million. The spokesman for NDLEA, Femi Babafemi, stated yesterday in Abuja that the fake currencies were recovered from a bus traveling from Lagos to Abuja. He stated that the 53-year-old driver of the vehicle, Onyebuchi Lebedim, was arrested. Babafemi also stated that one Jude Ndubisi was arrested in a raid on August 17 while in possession of 2.2 kilograms of methamphetamine at Kabusa Village, Federal Capital Territory. Well, no fewer than three persons have escaped death in a multiple crash that occurred in the Antony or Banikoro area of Lagos State. In a statement by the Lagos State Traffic Management Authority made available on its verified X handle, the multiple accidents involved a 40 feet container, two Toyota Camry cars, and a Tipa loaded with sand. The agency noted that one Lawal Babatunde of the Eagle Bravo of Zone 11, Anthony, along with the police in the Lukwaju area of the state, led the rescue mission. According to LASMA investigation, due to brake failure, uh, the 40 feet container truck, uh, while traveling at top speed, collided 
with three other vehicles, including a fully loaded tipper with sand. Quite an unfortunate one there. In business now, data obtained from the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, NUPRC, has indicated that while the country's total oil production in June was 37.5 million barrels, it dropped to 33.5 million barrels in July. Nigeria has lost about 249 billion Naira crude oil revenue in July following a plunge in the country's oil output by over 4 million barrels in the same month. Well, this shows that the country lost about 4 million barrels of oil between June and July. Pipeline vandalism and crude oil theft have been blamed severally as the reason for the plunge in Nigeria's oil output. According to the data from the World Bank, the average cost of Brent, the global benchmark for crude oil, in July 2023 was $80.1 per barrel. By losing 4 million barrels of crude oil in July, it implies that Nigeria lost about $320.4 million in the review, in the month in review. In foreign news, Tropical Storm Hillary is pushing into Southern California with fierce winds and heavy downpour as residents are faced with downed power lines, flooded streets, and are in need of rescue. According to the National Weather Service, Hillary is forecast uh, to continue to move north through California and dissipate over central Nevada today, bringing potentially historic rainfall amounts along the way that could trigger more floods, landslides, and debris flow. The storm could potentially be the first tropical system on record, a tropical storm on record, to strike Nevada. It could also wreck havoc farther north. Once a hurricane, Hillary weakened as it made landfall in Mexico yesterday, where at least one person died. Then it crossed over into the Golden State, while the storm has weakened significantly. It's still battering California with extreme weather as it moves further inland, bringing continued fears that floods and mudslides could potentially turn deadly. In sports, Coco Gauff claimed her third tournament win of the season with victory over Carolina Muchova in the Southern and Western Open final yesterday. The seven-seeded American teenager produced a strong performance to see off the world number 17, 6-3, in one hour and 56 minutes in Cincinnati. Well, Galv's victory will ensure she climbs a number. She climbs to number six in the WTA rankings today. Why, Czech Muchova will get a spot in the top 10. Muchova showed her battling qualities in the second set as she saved three match points when trailing 5-2 and pulled one back, but Galf was not to be denied. Well, Galf was the tournament's fourth teenage finalist and first since Vera Vanareva in 2004. She is the first teenage champion since 17-year-old Linda Tuero in 1968. The French Open runner-up will celebrate her birthday today by moving to number 10 on the WTA rankings. And that's the news update on VOP TV. We'd like you to subscribe and engage us on YouTube. It's Voice of the People TV and on other social media channels. It's at VOP TV Live. I'm Moses Humphrey. Good morning.